Feel and Fab is more than another wellness podcast. We will talk about topics that also include happiness hacks, biz inspiration, how-to topics, and interviews from experts in many fields. We hope to help you navigate your life with some helpful tools and tips to keep on grooving and staying happy. Welcome to the Feel and Fab podcast, and I'm your host, Marissa. Hey there, listeners. Welcome back to Feel and Fab podcast, where we talk about all sorts of topics, but mostly we want to help you feel fabulous in whatever you're pursuing. Today, I have a special guest named Stephen Hughes. And Stephen and I are friends from way back when (laughs) and still friends now. And we're going to have a great conversation today um, just about being an artist, exploring other income streams, um, being successful, and hopefully give you some tips on supplementing your income, especially if you might be an artist. So welcome to the show, Stephen. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, Marissa. This is the first podcast I've ever been on, so it's uh, it's historic for me. Heck yes. (laughs) That's awesome. Steven, we met, mm, I think my second year of college. Yeah, I was like, oh no, yeah, you were in college when we met. I totally forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, at the time, I believe you were working at a school, and your school came and did a concert with my school so like your high school came and did a concert with my college as sort of a fellowshipping type of situation collaboration (laughs) and I think that's where we first met and um we ended up working together later on and I feel like we have just kind of you know similar mindset about a lot of things obviously we're both different in what we're pursuing as well which is why I'm excited to talk to you today and give our listeners some more feedback from what you're doing, but that's kind of how we met through school and work and um, have connected on, you know, being a musician and Steven and I are both kind of that entrepreneur mindset and always exploring other things too. So Steven, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about what you do and that can be everything that you do. It doesn't have to just be one thing, but tell us a little bit about you and what you do and how you do it. So yeah, I'll tell you what I'm currently up to. It has changed over the past few years since I, uh, you know, graduated college and I started off as a middle school band director. Things have really, really evolved. I currently run a couple of different businesses. I am a real estate sales agent with Cobalt Banker Realty, and as a realtor, it's technically my own business, even though I'm associated with like a real estate franchise. I mm-hmm. think. That- forget that. Um, So I am self-employed as a real estate agent. And then I also (laughs) called SLH Music LLC. Now SLH Music LLC really has a lot of different branches. I have a branch where we sell uh, keyboard practice banners, or you can say they're practice pads. It's basically a way to practice instruments such as the xylophone, marimba, and vibraphone at a very cheap and um, efficient way that most people because most people can't afford a real instrument so we could talk about that a little bit in the podcast Mm -hmm. i also own tuila music academy out in tuila utah and then with slh music llc i teach private lessons and then take different gigs although i have a feeling that will change in the coming year there's some things that will be taken away from the business and there'll be some things that are added. We could uh, talk about that, but I think I'll just hand it back over to you, Marissa. Cool. Yeah, I love it. By the way, um, if you guys are listening and noticing Stephen's (laughs) Southern accent, it's so funny because uh, when we first met, Stephen told me he was from Tennessee and then I ended up moving to Tennessee, you know, pretty close to the area where he's from. So we just kind of swapped places. It's pretty funny. I don't know. I think it's funny. I, I'm never going to get rid of my accents. My wife says it's actually one of the more attractive features for, with me. And I'm like, really? It's, it's always shocking when people tell me they like my accent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't actually hear that a lot being from out west and now living in the south. I don't really get like, oh, I love your accent. But yeah. but yeah. I don't know if there's so much a accent for the west as much as there's like a colloquialisms, you know, mm-hmm. phrases and such. Yeah, totally. 
Awesome. Well, let's kind of break down a few different topics here. So let's first start off on, um, I just kind of want to talk about, you know, we both have degrees in music. And for maybe some of the listeners that are musicians, I want to talk just a little bit about the fact that it's okay if you do things, especially that make you make you money, that aren't related to your art. How do you feel about that topic? You know, it's kind of funny. I have felt so good about it for years, but never took a leap of faith. Um, Mm -hmm. I think I was scared for a long time. The, The example I like to talk about a lot with musicians is the composer Charles Ives. And I don't know if you know this, Marissa. I may have mentioned it to you before. But Charles Ives was a insurance salesman, and he owned like an insurance agency. And he came up with all kinds of stuff with insurance. I I wish I knew more details, but basically uh, when people study for different uh, insurance licenses or if they take a class in a school and stuff, there are sales techniques and theories and different things that Charles Ives came up with in insurance. But of course, history has put him down more as the eccentric, weird composer. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. It's like, well, dude had a day job. And yet he is considered one of the greatest American composers of all time. For me, and I think you may feel the same way, Marissa, I feel when I have my hands in a lot of different pots, it makes me more creative in music. Getting to from doing, you know, seven and eight hour practice days and listening to more music, but then talking to people and actually trying out different ways of creating um, has been more beneficial for me. And I think part of that does run into finances. We can talk about that as well. Yeah, totally. Um, I love what you were saying. When you have your hands in a few different things, it makes you more creative. I am definitely that type of person. I know maybe not everyone is, and some people are, you know, maybe more creatures of habit or whatnot. But for me personally, I feel much more motivated and creative when I am not dedicated to one thing (laughs) Um, because, you know, I tell people this all the time, but, um, you know, I run a videography business now and I feel like the things that I learned as a musician and just getting a degree in music have greatly impacted the way that I run my video business. And you can transfer all sorts of different talents and things to what you're doing, but I really do believe that you can spread yourself out. And, you know, people change jobs all the time. Um, especially, you know, people that have might have more traditional jobs. And I think that artists tend to have this feeling that if we have something going for us other than our art, that we are, you know, betraying, (laughs) betraying the art or betraying, um, being a creative person. I don't think it's that way at all. I think in fact, you can definitely get burnout on being creative if it's the only thing you do full time. And again, that might not apply to everyone, but that's been my experience where, you know, when music was the only thing I was hustling, it was exhausting. And I, I really lost that creativity and the passion when I was doing it all day, every day. And now that I have that balance a little bit more between a few different things that I'm doing, I feel like I can be a better version of whatever I'm spending my time doing. I totally agree. Um, It's funny. You talk about skills moving over. I worked for about three and a half years auditioning for different orchestras and military bands. And I won a couple of auditions and it's funny now that I'm doing real estate and I've been reading a lot of sales books, all the stuff it took me to win those auditions um, is much harder than sales and real estate, which people don't believe when I tell them. But it's much harder because I think when we are in school and things, we, we're taught to be like the greatest people that ever existed. And if you aren't the GOAT, if you aren't close to the GOAT, you're a failure, right? But mm-hmm. if you talk to people outside of the arts in any career, you know, for them, mediocrity is like $100,000 a year or, yeah. um, you know, a semi-busy schedule, but not working nights. It's It's really different. I think what um, happened with me and maybe what happened with you is that we didn't realize when we were in school, there was more to do with music than what we were taught. Now, I'm not trying to trash colleges when I say that, but 
we're in such an age of innovation, and when one is creative, there are problems we see that want to be that we need to solve, or we see holes within the industry. Well, no one has solved that problem yet. So in a sense, you are alone, and there's no way for that to be taught in school, right? For example, I mean, I, I bring up those keyboard banners. I just came across so many kids that couldn't afford a mallet instrument at home. And, you know, I had seen people who had put pictures on cardboard and I had played on the floor and stuff. Um, I knew people had done it. You know, mm -hmm. I never claimed to just come up with it out of thin air. But what I did do, and I still claim this, is I was the first person to market this and push it across the entire United States. Um, and it got really big because of COVID. Now I have um, three competitors. And of course, one of those competitors has been really antagonistic. You know, mm -hmm. like, well, you weren't the first came up with it, blah, blah, blah. You can't say it's the original. And it's like, well, I was the original person to push it across the U.S. and had to deal <laughs> with all the people who were kind of haters, you know? Mm -hmm. And I Well, thought, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. But, but I'll tell you, when I was going through it, I felt really weird because I'm like, wow, everyone hates this. But then the moment, this was so weird for me. When people started copying it, I felt so vindicated and I felt, wow, this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel jealous or mad or anything. I was like, wow, it is a good idea. I just yeah. I felt pretty happy and I still do. It's really interesting. I love that. And I think, I think you know, as artists in the first place, we, we found, you know, maybe we had a talent or something like that, but we found our art or, you know, in Stevens in my case, we found music as a way that we could serve people and, you know, something that we enjoyed obviously as well, but to share that with people is, you know, in, in a sense, serving them. And I think that that's what really fulfills me is just to be able to serve people. And I love that Steven saw a need, he solved the problem, and now he's able to serve people, you know, in more ways than one by providing this uh, you know, practice spanner that really is a helpful tool. And for those that don't know, um, you know, like a xylophone or a marimba, they can cost somewhere, you know, they can cost as much as a car, you know, the, the really nice ones top over 20 grand. So it's not something that every kid can have when they're, you know, learning music and playing in band. So I just love that you were able to find a need and solve it. And I think if you want to be an entrepreneur, that's the mindset that you have to have. You have to have the mindset of how can I serve people and how can I solve problems? Because that is what will really make you a successful person. Totally. Creativity and entrepreneurship, I think, are pretty much the same thing. And um, I think that's why I was able to move into real estate is, again, I, I had won an audition. And I thought I was going to leave Utah. It didn't work out. But during the interim, I was shutting down my music business. I took a job installing <clears throat> um, residential real estate signs and even some commercial signs. And what's funny is I met so many real estate agents that were pretty subpar and a lot of homeowners who were dissatisfied. And I got really interested. I'm like, well, how can this be better? And I just started watching videos and I read a couple books and I said, all right, I guess I'm going to do this. But I'll tell you, I really was reluctant. What should have taken me two and a half months to study and take a test took me, I got to think real quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It took me nine months. And it mm -hmm. wasn't because it was hard. I was, so, I didn't even realize this until I got up to the testing. I think I just was afraid to take the leap of faith because I had been full-time music up until I said, you know, I'm going to do this real estate thing and music. And I was so scared, but now that I'm so many months into it, it's like, wow, this was totally the right decision for me. My work-life balance is um, so much uh, more balanced. And, you know, I don't have to worry about finances like I used to. And gosh, because of finances, I'm now able to focus on some other projects music-wise. I'm able to fund them mm -hmm. and I'm able to grow and expand and um What's the word? I don't want to say leverage. There's some scalability in the music business now because it's not just me being an owner operator. I can be the CEO and hire people. I have a couple of employees now, which is really cool. Yeah, that's totally awesome. I think that, 
you know, it's a, it's a great time to be alive in our day and age because you can do multiple things, especially, you know, there's so many businesses that you can run online now, you know, back in the old days, people chose their career path, if you will. Um, and that was it for life, (laughs) you know, um, they didn't have time to leave the farm and go, um, I don't know, do something else. And, and it's just really cool now that we have this opportunity to diversify our income streams if we would like to. Um, cause I know for me, I, I love having the different things going on in my life. And I would just encourage you that if you feel like you're stuck, um, that it's okay to have something else going on, whether it's a side hustle or a day job or whatever it is, um, to, to bring you a little bit more of that balance, because I really do think it is valuable as a creative person, um, to, to balance that out a little bit. I think it's needed. I'm trying to think of your audience when I describe this as well, because I know not everyone is a musician, but, Mm -hmm. um, I think COVID kind of showed that having diverse incomes has been really helpful. It's And hopefully you don't think this is like negative when I say this, but in school, we were always told there was two paths. You either win an audition to be like in an orchestra or something, or you teach school, like either college, middle school, or high school. Well, I've seen so many people in orchestras lose their jobs. They haven't been paid in months. And then with schools, you know, it's so um, difficult right now, or in a lot of places, they've cut band or choir or orchestra because they mm-hmm. think it's dangerous or there's financial issues. With uh, the people who have done well music wise, have been people in military bands and freelancers. But even amongst freelancers, the ones that only took gigs, they were only performers, have lost a lot of money. The freelancers that did really well were people who were also entrepreneurial. They taught lessons. They had Merck. They had a YouTube channel. Um, or maybe they had another job like, you know, real estate or they did insurance or they even worked at a coffee shop. All kinds of different things. So mm-hmm. I think this year alone has proven that <clears throat> security doesn't exist in a lot of things anymore that mm-hmm. people thought they did. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's a great time to be alive with the aspect that we can have multiple income streams. And I think that you should, because I know for me, like when COVID hit, all of my music stuff was gone. And I was glad that I had some other income streams to rely upon, you know, for a few months there. Um, And, you know, it actually kind of made me think about, um, you know, my, my art and where I want to shift my focus. And that was a great time to kind of think about that, but yeah, you just never know what's going to happen. And I think it's great to always think, how can I improve and how can I keep getting better? So, um, before we wrap up today, Stephen, I want to hear a little bit about, um, what it's like being a real estate agent. Cause I just don't know very much about it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what it's like being a real estate agent? Um, just in case the audience might be curious about adding that to their income stream, or, um, just want to hear a little bit about what the day in the life is like. So with real estate, it's really interesting. Um, there there's hustling just like in any other sales or entrepreneurial job. I just reach out to a lot of people that, are selling. There's lots of ways to get leads um, for people who are selling or buying. And I have a lot of conversations. I have conversations with people in house related industries. Like I have a phone call with a roofing company later today. Mm -hmm. And um, I spend a lot of time sending things in the mail, emailing people, calling people, texting people and looking at houses. Um, It's pretty much the same every day. I wake up, I go online to my lead resources and I make calls and text and emails. And then I send things through normal snail mail. I do that from the time I wake up until about 12 noon. After 12, I'm in meetings or appointments with people who are looking to buy or sell. And I am sometimes, gosh, this is kind of crazy. Sometimes I'm door knocking. This is something Mm -hmm. realtors do. They'll door knock. On the weekends, I'll host an open house, and I'll advertise that open house a couple days beforehand. Real estate is so big. There's so many people in so many houses. 
there's plenty of work. The hardest thing is putting the lingo down and getting people to know you and know that you do it. Mm -hmm. That has been the most difficult thing. And, um, you know, there's networking in it, just like in music. Absolutely. Well, that's really cool. Um, I'm going to hopefully be buying a house here within the next year. We'll see how that goes, but everybody needs a house. So like you said, there's plenty of work to do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There it's so such a big industry. It's um, a little different than music in that way, that there's plenty of people to help. For sure. So Stephen, a topic that I love to talk about here on the podcast is just wellness routines and how you feel good and how that keeps you um, going and being able to do all the things that you do. So would you tell us a little bit about maybe some of your wellness routines, how you stay focused mentally and physically and spiritually and... um, you know, how you feel good. Cause I think that that's a big component of being a successful person is feeling well enough to do all the things. Yeah. Um, I go to the gym just about every day. Sometimes I don't go on Sunday and that's a big deal for me. I do that first thing in the morning. That just helps me a lot. And I read a book at the gym, um, not the whole time, but it's just when I'm on the Stairmaster, I do that every day. And, you know, that's like 15 minutes of reading and it'll be something that's either real estate or music or self-help or spiritual. It kind of rotates between what I'm reading. And then um, I'd say the other two things that help me is I have a daily schedule I follow. I have Google Calendar is my best friend. It, <laughs> it is just so important for me. And then I think my wife helps a lot. Um, I have, my brain is kind of crazy. So sometimes I have to say, hey, what do you think about this and this and this? And then we have to weed out like, well, this is a priority. This can happen in 10 years. This could happen in six months, you know, and just mm-hmm. kind of getting an idea there. Um, most stuff moves quickly for me. So I have to figure out what is priority right then and now. And my wife is very helpful with that. Awesome. That's great. Um, and then if, do you have any advice for people that, you know, might be an artist might be looking to diversify their income streams. What advice would you give them on getting started and coming up with creative ideas? Well, I think the first suggestion I would make for people who struggle to come up with ideas and be creative is get a notebook and just start writing stream of consciousness about things that you're passionate about and you'll end up like, and I'd, I'd say you should vent and rant about problems you see. And then you have to sit there and say, okay, I vented and I ranted, but how can I solve this? Like if I had a solution and that it could fix it today, what would that solution be? And challenging yourself that way will make yourself creative. But I think another way to be creative is by demanding, um, and this is a music thing, by demanding, um, perfection and ultimate attention to detail because you know this marissa like every single little thing in music has to be perfect otherwise you're criticized on it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i find in creativity that has helped me to be very creative uh so steven if there is anywhere you would like to send the listeners to you know maybe go find the stuff that we talked about today or anything you'd like to promote i always love to share that with the listeners so that they can give you some support as well. Yeah. I think the, if you want to just kind of check out what I do, you can just go to either one of my Facebook uh, pages. I just have Stephen L Hughes drums and percussion um, on Facebook as a business page. And then I also have Stephen Hughes realtor on Facebook. Uh, the business has a couple of websites, but those Facebook pages would help me out the most and kind of lead you to all the other things. Awesome. I think one of the best things that we can do as creatives and entrepreneurs is just to support each other. So thank you for coming on the show today and sharing some of your thoughts and ideas with uh, my audience. And I hope that they enjoyed this episode and go ahead and check you out. Alrighty. Thanks, Marissa.